Hello there. Today we're going through Art of Electronics exercise 2.5, which is on the emitter follower circuit. In this exercise, we need to use the emitter follower circuit with a base driven from a voltage divider to provide a stiff source of 5 volts from an available regulated 15 volt power supply. The load current for the output has been given as 25 milliamps, and we need to choose the resistor value so that the output voltage doesn't drop more than 5% under full load. So the emitter circuit is given on the screen now. You can see the input voltage is coming in from here. The question says that we need to drive this input with a potential divider over here. The power supply is 15 volts, which is going to connect over here. And our output voltage is over here. Now we can have the load connected directly here instead of R, or we can have a load connected to V out basically over here. So we would have a resistor going from V out to ground over here. So for the calculation and the circuit that I'm going to design, I'm going to replace R with the load resistor. So first of all, let's note down the key information that's given to us from the question. So obviously the power supply is 15 volts. We're using a emitter follower circuit. We need to drive the base with a potential divider and we need to produce a 5 volt source for which we have been given a 5% tolerance. So that would be 250 millivolts. So we can drop our output as much as 4.75 volts and still be in specification. And the maximum load current is 25 milliamps. So we know that our maximum load is 25 milliamps with a supply voltage of 5 volts. So that gives us a load resistor or the minimum load resistor of 200 ohms. So that's what I've put down for now. We also have a potential divider driving the input. So I've got R1 and R2 that I've introduced into the circuit. And then we have a 15 volt power supply that goes to the potential divider and the collector of the NPN transistor. We know that the base current is equal to the collector current divided by beta, or the collector current is equal to the base current times the beta. So if the collector current is 25 milliamps, then we can calculate what our base current needs to be in order to drive that 25 milliamps through the NPN transistor. Now for this question, first of all, I'm just going to start off with some assumptions. So I'm going to assume a 50 beta value for the NPN transistor, and then we'll go into selecting a transistor and put some real values in. But 50 is a good assumption to begin with. So calculating the base current, 25 milliamps divided by 50 gives us a base current of 500 microamps. So in this direction, basically from R1 through base, we need 500 microamps. Now, if you think about this circuit, you can see that the transistor is going to load the potential divider that's over here. So if we're trying to draw 500 microamps in this direction, then that gives us a limitation for what the value for R1 and R2 can be. Because if we, because if we make them too large, the base current will cause a larger voltage drop on R1, which will reduce our base voltage, which in turn will reduce our output voltage as we have a VBE voltage of approximately 0.6 volts. However, that does vary from transistor to transistor and how much collector current you have. I'll show you more details on that variation at the end of this video when we actually select an NPN transistor. So our base current is 500 microamps. So in order for this base driving potential divider to be suitable to drive this, I'm going to make sure that the current going through the base resistors is at least 10 times the base current. So the current going through this path, I'm going to make 500 microamps times 10, which gives me five milliamps as the potential divider current. So the current I need to go down this path is five milliamps. Now I know the current and the voltage for the potential divider. So the power supply is obviously 15 volts and the current down this path is five milliamps as I've just calculated. So that gives me the total value for the potential divider. So the total value, so R1 plus R2 is equal to 15 volts divided by 5 milliamps, which gives me 3000 ohms for R1 and R2 in total. Now from the question, we know that we need to hold the emitter voltage at 5 volts, which is also the V out that I've denoted here. We're going to assume that we have a VBE voltage of 0.6. So that's the voltage from here to here. So that's the base and the emitter. So voltage, base, emitter. So our base voltage is going to be 5 
per 0.6, so 5.6 volts over here. So we need to configure the 3000 ohms that we have on this side to produce 5.6 volts at the base over here. So first of all, what we can do is find the ratio of 5.6, which is what we need, divide by 15. And if you multiply that by the total resistance that we need from the circuit, that gives us the value for the resistor on the bottom. So the ratio between the two is 0 0.37 times by 3000 ohms, which we calculated earlier, gives us an R2 value of 1120 ohms. To calculate the value for R1, we basically need to take the remainder of the proportion. So that's 1 minus 0 0.37 or Vs minus Vb divided by Vs times the total resistance, which is 3000 ohms, gives us a R1 value of 1880 ohms. Now, if you add both of these together, you should get a total resistance of 3000 ohms. So basically now we have the resistance values for R1, R2, and RL. We don't have a transistor number yet, but we can look at that at the end after doing some simulations. So now I'm just going to show you the final circuit with my components calculated. So we have a emitter follower circuit over here with our load going down here. I've got 200 kilo ohms over here, but we're gonna change that to 200 ohms when we do the simulation. And then we have our potential divider that we just calculated. So let me put this in LT Spice and show you how it works. On the screen now, we have the circuit that I built up using the calculated resistor values. So we've got our load, we've got our R1 and R2 value, which is the potential divider that's driving the base, and we've got our 15 volt power supply. I'm doing a simulation of one second, so let's press play and see what's happening in this circuit. So first of all, let's look at the base voltage, and you can see that is it's very close to 5.6, but it's not exactly 5.6. And that is because of this NPN transistor. So we made an assumption of 0.6 volts on the VBE value. However, the VBE voltage is actually 741 millivolts, not 600 millivolts. The current that's going through the collector and the emitter. Now let's quickly look at the output voltage. And you can see that it is 4.818 volts, which if I drag this, you can read this over here. So that's 4.8 volts with the maximum load that's been specified in the question. Now, if I change this load, we should see the output voltage rise. So let's try 100 kilo ohms at the load now. And you can see the output voltage has gone up to 5.043 volts. And basically, when we have no load, our output voltage goes up to 5.33 volts, which might be an undesirable behavior. Obviously, if you can guarantee a 200 ohm load all the time, then you would basically configure your circuit to get five volts on the output. So with a 100K load, let's look at our VBE voltage. You can see that the VBE voltage is no longer 741 millivolts, but it's dropped to 556. So the VBE voltage does depend on the load current. Now the circuit itself didn't really specify what the nominal output voltage should be. So if I was to assume plus or minus 5%, then this is well within specification. So I would be allowed 5.25 volts. So with no load, obviously it goes quite high. So if I disconnect the load completely, then we are out of specification. Now, in order to solve that, what we can do is basically replace this resistor with a fixed value resistor that stays in this position all the time, drawing current. And that would be basically configured for five volts. And then as soon as you put your load of 200 ohms on the output, obviously your voltage will drop. However, it will ensure that your output voltage doesn't go above five volts. So let me do that now. So on the screen now, I have added another resistor R3 in parallel with the load. And the value for the resistor, I got 19K. And what that resistor does is basically keeps this voltage from rising too high when the load is disconnected. So we noticed that when the load was disconnected, when we put 10 giga ohms resistor value, the output was going up to 5.3 volts. Now, if I do the same thing now, is basically disconnect the load with the 10 giga ohm resistor, you can see that the output voltage only goes up to 5 volts now. And that's because this 19K resistor is still connected. Now, if I put the 200 ohm resistor back in, which is the maximum load, you can see the output voltage drops to 4.816 volts and that is within tolerance. So we were allowed 250 
millivolts of drop, which is 4.75. So this gives us an adequate solution for the question. Now I calculated this value resistor from trial and error, basically reduced it to fine tune it to 5 volts. You can calculate it using another VPE value. Obviously, when we did our resistor calculations over here, we assumed a 0.6 volt drop on this. However, if I look at the data sheet for this transistor, you can see there is a large variation for the VBE voltage, which changes with the collector current. So as the collector current goes up, the VBE voltage also goes up. So for no load conditions, which would be down here somewhere, our VBE voltage is going to be less than 0.6 volts. And as our collector current goes up to 25 millivolts, which is roughly over here, our VBE voltage was 0.75, which makes sense according to that model. And we can test this out here. So basically at the moment, we're drawing 25 milliamps from the collector. If you look at the VBE voltage, you can see it's 741 millivolts. Comparing that to the data sheet, at 25 milliamps of collector current, our VBE voltage is 0.75, roughly. At no load, it basically goes down to 0.55, maybe something like that, 0.58. However, this is an approximation, so I so I fine-tuned this circuit with trial and error. So let's look at the emitter current with the 19k ohm load. So you got 263 microamps. Now, if I go back to my data sheet with 200 microamps, so that is basically around here, we have a VBE voltage of approximately 0.62 maybe. So just look at it on the model as well. You get 0.6 exactly. So that's why we have a basic perfect calculation for our output voltage when the load is not connected because we, used, we assumed 0.6 over here and with 250 microamps of current through the emitter, we get 0.6 VBE. So we have got 5 volts under no load conditions. To recap, we tune this circuit so that it's not loaded significantly when we're trying to draw 25 milliamps from the circuit. Because obviously you're going to have a certain amount of current going in this direction, which will produce a voltage drop on R1 and will mean that your VB voltage is lower. So therefore your output voltage is lower. So when you start to load the circuit more, not only is the VB voltage going up, but the voltage drop on R1 is going up as well, which reduces this. So basically you get more and more of a drop here. So we've basically stiffened this up so that it's not impacted as much. And we have preloaded the output with a 19 kilo ohm resistor so that the output voltage doesn't rise too much under no load conditions. If you wanted to mathematically calculate the value of this resistor, what you would need to do is run a specific amount of current. We want to run 250 microamps through here. So if we are running 250 microamps, we can go to the data sheet of the component of the NPN transistor and see that at 250 microamps, which is over here, we're going to have an approximate voltage drop of 0.6 volts. So then you'll do the calculations with 0.6 VBE voltage for no load conditions. And then you can see as your collector current increases by 25 milliamps, which is over here, you're not going to get more than 250 millivolts of drop across that base. So you're going to be within tolerance at maximum load as well. To get to a good solution for this question, what you are doing is essentially balancing the current that's going through here, the VBE voltage, the base voltage over here, and some preload on this. And with that balance, you can basically get a perfect output voltage of 5 volts under no load conditions, so when the R load is disconnected, and you can get a suitable drop when the load is connected. And the reason for the voltage drop is because you are loading this resistor with more current, so there's a higher voltage drop reducing this voltage, therefore this voltage, and the VBE voltage is also increasing with more collector current. So therefore we are also drops. So that's all I have to share with you today for the answer to this question. I'm going to build this circuit up physically and I'll show you how it works in the next video. So hopefully you found the solution useful. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.